Bring the public hearing to order Tuesday, January 20th, 2015, 9.30 a.m. Roll call, please, Erica. Commissioner Tedesco. Here. Commissioner Henry. Here. Commissioner Hansen. Here. Commissioner Odoricio. Present. Commissioner Pulowski. Here. Could everyone please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, could I get a motion to approve the agenda? Second. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Pulaski? Do I have to sing because of what you said? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, number four, Board of County Commissioners 2015 reorganization. This is where we have our nominations for chairman and vice chairman. Do I hear any nominations? Chair, Mr. Chairman, I nominate uh, the current chair to continue as the chair of And I second. I'm not, I'm not sure what the protocol of that is. You know, as part of that, this is not a gift to that uh, When I campaigned, one of the things that I said was this. Number one, I'd love to go to college. I know you all know that, but it's been years and I don't think you would probably part of my rent that I carry on at the end of the phone because it's a big thing. There you go. Oh. No wonder nobody can hear me. Okay. Anyway, uh, this isn't against the current chair. I'm looking for balance, and I think we need that in our county government, and so that's why I've made that nomination. So just so you know, thank you. Chair? Excuse me. Yes, Commissioner Odoricio. If I may comment as well. I, I also uh, make my nomination not as against Eric Hansen. In fact, uh, I look forward to working with Commissioner Hansen on many projects, uh, on some things that I think that we can work really closely on. So uh, mine is just a matter of I've, I've seen uh, Chairman Tedesco working on this uh, board, and I, would, I know Chairman Tedesco, and I would like to uh, continue working with him in that capacity. Uh, and then I think there's plenty of time in the future for us to make changes also. And, and Mr. Chair, just... just Chairman Pulaski. Chairman, sorry. Or Commissioner um, Pulaski. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. I, I, I'm not offended. <clears throat> but anyway, um, I think going back over the years, having been a resident of the county for 47 years, um, it used to be that kind of these positions were traded off. And I know that uh, Commissioner Hansen has been on the uh, commission for four years and never set as chair. So I, I would like to see us return to a more of a balanced approach. So anyway, just additional information thank you chair I'd like to go ahead and call the question you call question has been called commissioner Odori so 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 commissioners this will be on the first motion made made by commissioner Odoricio to appoint Chaz Tedesco as chair for the following year commissioner Odoricio yes to appoint Tedesco as chair Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? I appreciate what Jan did. I didn't ask what, <laughs> her to do that, actually. Um, and this will be the second time she has uh, nominated me for something that I've lost. Commissioner Pulaski? I I'll vote for Tedesco. Do we want to vote on the second motion made by Commissioner? No, I, I think that's silly. <laughs> okay. Right, there was, it was the motion, and there was two nominations. So, okay. That being said, I believe we have a motion passed, and I will tell you that I definitely appreciate remaining chair for the next year. I do not intend to 
try to stay the chair, nor do I intend to dominate as a political party in this position. Uh, I do believe that, you know, the precedence has been set in the past years where chairmen have um, held this position for two years and then traded over. And I think that we got away from that before we came in and also while we were here in the first year, but I would like to see us go back to that. Um, I think it's a very good precedence that we had before, and I think that we can reattain that. And I, I have no, no misconceptions of who should be chair or who shouldn't be chair. I think every single commissioner up here would make a, and has made a fine chair and will do so in the future. So I appreciate and thank you very much. Uh, second nomination would be for vice chair. I just Chairman, I would like to nominate uh, Commissioner Steve Odorizio. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Um, let, let me just ask real quick because we had the nomination. I, I want to make sure there aren't any other nominations for that position. Are there any other nominations for that position? Seeing no other nominations, please take the vote. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? <laughs> Yes. Commissioner Hansen. Yes. Commissioner Odoracio. Yes. Commissioner Pulaski. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Motion passed. We will today begin the public hearings with a proclamation in advance of National School Choice Week, which will be celebrated January 25th through the 31st. Um, we can all agree that children represent the future of Adams County. Accordingly, it is critical that we support the unique talents and natural, natural interests of our community's young students to provide them with a variety of educational options. From traditional schools to magnet schools to charter schools, Adams County supports giving parents and children options when it comes to finding the right fit for their family. I know that I'm scheduled to read this proclamation, but I think it may be appropriate that, you know, since we do have two new commissioners, that we ask one of the new commissioners to read the proclamation. Is there a new commissioner that would like to read? Sure. <clears throat> commissioner Pulaski. We're going to check my reading skills here. <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> this is a, a proclamation for school choice week, January 25th through the 31st, 2015. Whereas all children in Adams County should have access to the highest quality education possible, and whereas Adams County recognizes the important role that an effective education plays in preparing all students in Adams County to be successful adults, and whereas quality education is a critically, is a critically important to the economic vitality of Adams County, and whereas Adams County is home to a multitude of high quality traditional public schools, public magnet schools, public charter schools and non-public schools from which parents can choose for their children, and whereas educational variety not only helps to diversify our economy but also enhances the vibrancy of our community, and whereas Adams County has high quality teaching professionals in traditional public schools, public magnet schools, public charter schools, and non-public schools who are committed to educating our children, and whereas School Choice Week is celebrated across the country by millions of students parents, educators, schools, and organizations to raise awareness of the need for effective educational options that challenge and motivate all students to succeed. From the, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Adams, State of Colorado, does hereby proclaim January 25th through the 31st, 2015, as School Choice Week in Adams County to shine a positive spotlight on the need for effective education options for all children. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have any comments? Seeing none, thank you very much. Do we have someone scheduled to receive this proclamation or is there anyone here from ACY or anything? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we will move on. Public comment. Erica, do we have anyone signed up for public comment? We do not have anyone signed up. At this time, if there's anyone in the audience who has not signed up for public comment and would like to make public comment at this time, do I see any? Seeing none, elected officials comment. Any of the elected officials like to make a comment? Is it appropriate at this time, I would like to thank the staff and everyone for last week for uh, the great uh, 
swearing in ceremony and I know that uh, staff members worked very hard at that and it, they did a great job and so I just wanted to express my appreciation. Thank you. Any other, Commissioner Hanson? Um, you know, this is a historic day and I'm sure that the chair is probably gonna make that comment later so I apologize for stealing your thunder if you were going to do that but, <laughs> but um, this is the first uh, Board of County Commissioners meeting with five commissioners. I uh, specifically want to recognize uh, Commissioner Alice Nickel, who's in the audience, former Commissioner Alice Nickel, who's in the audience, because she was one of the three commissioners, including myself and Commissioner Skip Fisher, who voted uh, to put this issue on the ballot in 2012. Um, and I, I, you know, there's a lot of reasons why that happened, but at the end of the day, it was the voters who decided, uh, I think something like 57%, that this was the kind of government that they wanted to have. Uh, which I think was actually surprising to a lot of us because when we did some early polling on it, it certainly didn't show that it was going to get 57%. Um, it actually didn't show that it was going to pass at all. Um, and I, I don't know why that happened exactly, but, but, um, but I think that um, it speaks to the desire of, of the public to have this form of government. And I think that there's a number of good reasons for that. Number one, because it's a really big county. Um, and having five commissioners gives you, I think, a more representative group, you know, rather than having, you know, two commissioners from Thornton or three from Westminster or something like that, you know, you end up with a, a better geographic representation. And I think that's a really good thing. Um, it's gotten to be a lot bigger job than it used to be, too. You know, I think that helps in terms of splitting people apart. Or it's not splitting people apart. It helps in terms of splitting up the responsibilities, you know, more effectively that way. Um, and in addition to that, I think that having five brains on the case and is is a more collaborative situation than three. Um, and um, I, I'm very pleased that that's the case. And um, uh, I want to thank the voters for entrusting us uh, to make this happen today. Thank you very much. Any other comments from our look? Commissioners? Seeing none, consent calendar. Do I have a motion for the consent calendar? <clears throat> we have a very quiet calendar? board. <laughs> uh, so moved. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Same. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Pulowski? Yes. Thank you very much. New business, county manager. Yeah, good morning, commissioners. We have uh, three items this morning for uh, consideration. Um, our first one's a resolution to award a contract to Oracle for an annual J.D. Edwards maintenance agreement. Uh, Bethany Bonacera with our purchasing department's here to talk to you about. Good morning, commissioners. Adams County uses Oracle J.D. Edwards software as the county's primary ERP system. The system is used for key county business, business processes such as payroll, human resources, budgeting, accounting, purchasing, accounts receivable, accounts payable. In order to receive support from Oracle for the J.D. Edwards system, it is a requirement that we sustain a maintenance contract with them. Support from Oracle includes regulatory updates, application updates, and support foundation, tools updates, and access to documentation and knowledge resources. Oracle is an approved vendor in the Adams County single source policy list on the Adams County Purchasing Policy Appendix E, Cooperative Single and Sole Source Purchases. It is recommended to continue a maintenance agreement with Oracle for the not to exceed amount of $142,715.43. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have any questions for staff? No questions for staff. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment at this time? Seeing none, do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Oh, second. Second. <laughs> Could we please read the motion, please? Do you have the motion in front of you? The motion to resolution to award contract to Oracle for an annual J.D. Edwards maintenance agreement in the amount not to exceed $142,715.43. Commissioner Pulowski? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner <Sorry>. Hansen? <laughs> Aye. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. 
So I'll say we're just working through the bugs of this and, and the rhythm, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bethany. Uh, our next item is a uh, uh, item number two. It's a resolution approving the use of a state awarded dealers for the purchase of Adams County light duty uh, fleet vehicles. Uh, Jen Tierney with purchasings here. Good morning. <clears throat> the fleet division of the Adams County per Transportation Department has budgeted $1,952,000 for the replacement of cars and light to medium duty trucks for 2015. The vehicles up for replacement have reached or exceeded their life cycle. Every year, the state of Colorado formally solicits and awards the purchase of fleet vehicles to multiple Colorado dealerships. Because of the volume of the vehicles purchased through the state award, pricing of this, these vehicles is very competitive. Each of the contract award includes cooperative language and the use of cooperative agreements adheres to the Adams County Purchasing Poly Policy 1080. Actual purchases will be made at various times throughout the year by the purchasing division. Each purchase order will be issued to the appropriate dealership based on vehicle specifications as determined by the fleet division. Staff is requesting the use of state awarded dealers for the purchase of light duty fleet vehicles bought for 2015. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have any questions for staff? It, Commissioner Palazzo. Yeah, the, um, these may be silly questions, just allow me a little. <laughs> uh, One million dollars is a lot of money for vehicles, so is that typically every year, that much is budgeted every year? Um, I'm going to invite our fleet administrator down. Okay. He can probably <laughs> answer that question right. a little better. Okay. better. Hi, Rich Stark uh, with Flea Services. Um, we have a replacement um, policy in place um, that um, we replace vehicles at a certain mileage criteria. Yeah. And so every year it moves a little bit, um, mm -hmm. but we tend to be at about $4 million per year. Really? And um, is it a lease or is it actual purchase? Say they can ask you. Is it a lease or is it actual oh, purchase? It's actually, we actually purchase. It is a purchase, that, yes. and that is the best way to go for um, mile. I'm, I I don't want to challenge it too much here. But I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm just asking. <laughs> um, yeah, um, you know, working with the finance department, we uh -huh. determined that that's the best way to go. We purchase them outright okay. and um, depreciate them over their life. Very good. I appreciate that. Thank you, Commissioner Zay, Commissioner Odoricio. Mr. Chair, I have a question. What was the uh, request last year? Um, it was about $4 million also. And do you, what do you anticipate for next year? Um, we're running those numbers now, and uh, we probably are a little bit higher next year. And why um, is that? In 2000, for this year, for 2015, there is a lot of yellow fleet. And so what we're talking about here is white fleet, so that's light duty from three-quarter ton pickups down to sedans. Um, we also have... Um, Ford um, dump trucks, we have a sweeper, um, and there's some, some heavy equipment that's pretty pricey. And next year, there's even more um, that will hit our criteria. Um, we're working with the uh, highway department to determine if those vehicles need to be replaced or maybe we can um, eliminate some of those, but that's still an open question. And you say the criteria for rollover is usually based on mileage? Um, mileage and age. Um, um, 10 years when we get to a big, a heavy, piece of heavy equipment, 10 years, um, that's really getting old. And so um, we work mostly off of mileage, but 10 years is, is kind of, um, if that hits that second, that's where we go. Understand. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions? I would like to state that, you know, these are absolutely some good questions because I know that when we, when I first came in, um, there was an issue with purchasing vehicles. We had gone through an economic downturn um, a lot of our vehicles had been maintained and not replaced. And so we had a backup that was building over time that we really needed to address. And so now we've addressed that issue. And so we're back into a cycle where it's more affordable to obtain, to maintain and bring those vehicles in. I know that there was a lot of discussion last year on some of the heavier trucks. Um, there'll be some more discussion this year. Um, but if we, what we ended up with is we ended up putting it off too far out and we had to replace too many vehicles all at one time. So I appreciate that we're going back to the, to the idea that we replace them as they come up. So thank you very much. Uh, do we have a motion? So move. Second. 
Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Thank you. Um, our last item this morning is a resolution to award a request for proposal to Carnation Building Service for custodial services, and Jen's here to talk through that as well. Uh, Adams County currently uses a firm to provide custodial services in all Adams County building except for the Government Center. Proposals were open on November 13th, 2014 to consider contractors to provide custodial services for 2015. The county received nine proposals. Proposals were rated on the following criteria. Pricing, ability to perform the services, references, the overall proposal, and qualifications. After a thorough analysis, several contractors relieve, receive lower scores due to their proposed inadequate staffing plans or did not adhere to the guidelines of the RFP. Based on the evaluations and proposed pricing, Carnation Building Service was, building service was determined to be the most qualified proposer with the lowest pricing. The Evaluation Committee rec recommends that Carnation Building Services be awarded the contract for custodial services in the not to exceed amount of $688,884 for the 2015 custodial services. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have any questions for staff? I do. Commissioner Odoricio. What other criteria other than price do you guys make your determination for a recommendation? Um, Basically, on this particular one, it was their staffing plan was very important, i.e., and I'm going to invite Mike down. He can probably elaborate on it a little bit more than I can. Staffing plan was very important, their qualifications, their professionalism, um, and th their um, references, uh, obviously, with uh, custodial services. References are very important, as you can receive some very good service or not so good service. Mr. Goins. Good morning. Mike Goins, Director of Facilities. When we reviewed these RFPs um, <clears throat> during the evaluation process, we did not see any pricing whatsoever. And as we went through these, some of the staffing plans just did not add up. And an example would be, let's take the Justice Center. It's 300,000 square feet, about the size of this building. And we had several contractors that were going to propose eight janitorial staff to clean this size of a building. We currently have 14 here. Right now at the Justice Center, we currently have 14. And the industry standard's about 20,000 square foot per cleaner. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that we ran into. The other, uh, some of the things that we talked about was we currently have our janitorial contractor clean from 4, or excuse me, from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., four hours. A lot of these people put in seven hours, eight hours, 10 hours. Well, we, we actually have them clean from 5 to 9 so we can shut systems off after 9 o'clock for energy conservation. So all of these other vendors that proposed did not meet that criteria. Any other questions? Commissioner Hanson. It's not a question or just more of a comment. Um, I've asked for in the past, and other people have asked for me to pass the entire evaluation, as well as pricing and everything else um, attached to these documents. It's not here, and I can't vote for this today because I have no idea uh, what the other proposals were. It's not in my. It's not in the documents online anyway. Was it? Were the spreadsheets not attached to that particular it's, document? It's not. In, it's not in the online version. I can tell you that. It says right here on the online one, attached documents, resolution, score yeah. pricing sheet, but yes, you're right. I do not see the actual attachment. It, 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 you know, it might have been, you know, to, 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 be, to be fair, it might have been in the version that was sent out to the commissioners. I don't typically read that version. I typically just read the online one um, because it's just too darn big to open. Um, but um, but uh, certainly the public, you know, wasn't able to see that. Yeah. Commissioner Hanson, would you be comfortable if we just go ahead and pull it because I share your concerns. I think the public should have access to that information also. We could pull it and then next week we can go ahead and vote on it. So if we could table this item until next week, and put it on the That's agenda fine. for next week. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you.
Okay, county attorney. Good morning, commissioners. No new business from the county attorney today. All righty, we will take a seven minute break and resume with land use hearings. 